listening to Real Coaching Radio TV, building a positive network. Today's podcast is brought to you by Kids Talk Foundation, a global nonprofit organization providing youth advocacy, television programming, and training services in the United States, along with comprehensive medical and educational services for the developing world, most recently in Kenya, Africa, where Kids Talk Foundation provides a feeding program, medical care, and educational services to over 1,300 young people each day. Please help our youth and place your donation. Go to www.kidstalk.org. Are you in the entertainment industry? If you answered yes and you want to promote yourself, your passion, and profession, check out Creative Independent Artist Magazines at CIAartists.com. Endorsed by Kids Talk Foundation Worldwide. You can hear shows from Real Coaching Radio TV Network while on the go with Stitcher Smart Radio. Stitcher is a free news and talk mobile app available for your smartphones, smart TVs, and cars. And when you download Stitcher to hear shows from Real Coaching Radio TV Network, you have a chance to win some money. Downloading is quick and easy. Just find Stitcher in the App Store. Download it. It's free and just takes a few seconds. Then, during registration, hit the promo code box and enter. Enter RCRN to get automatically entered to win $100. The latest episode of the shows will be waiting for you in your favorites. You'll get access to lots of other amazing shows too. Always available to you on demand. No syncing. It's Stitcher Smart Radio. Don't forget to enter promo code RCRN when you register at www.stitcher.com slash RCRN. Today's man needs to be whole, more than just providing financial security for their relationships and families. Join us as we explore the social conditioning that has and is systematically disempowering men. By becoming awake and aware, we can reverse that conditioning, especially for the boys. Here are your hosts of the Radical Man Internet TV show, Dr. Grant Cruley, Sensei, and Coach Steve Talk. Yes, welcome everybody to The Radical Man on this beautiful Thursday evening with your host, Sensei Grant, and Coach Steve Tote, myself, the founder of Real Coaching Radio and TV Network, and the soon-to-be Conscious Evolution Media Network on the 1st of 2013. And our guest this evening is Dr. Brad Shapiro, and he is a doctor of chiropractic, and actually both of them Sensei and Dr. Brad are joining us from Tennessee. Welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> it's it's going great. I'm I'm full of energy. I'm I'm actually feeding off of your energy because I, I'm feeling that you guys are on on the top of your game right now. Is that accurate? <laughs> that is totally accurate. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, great. So. Let me ask Dr. Brad our usual question when we have a guest, and the question is, what is to be a man? Okay, it's a good question. Um, yes, uh, for me, as far as what it means to be a man, and you know, when you look at concepts like masculine, you know, uh, masculine energy and those types of things. Uh, to me, it's really more about an experience. Um, you know, you can use words, I guess, like certainty and decisiveness, strength, courage, those types of things. But I, you know, I really feel like it just—it's an experience. Um, one of the analogies I heard a long time ago was just this whole idea of you could describe, you know, all the things that it takes to swim. You know, you could talk about buoyancy. You could talk about using the breaststroke or freestyle strokes, but you would never know what it meant to swim if you didn't jump in the water. You know, that experience of swimming is really what defines it. And I guess to kind of define, you know, an experience that showed me what masculinity is, is actually Dr. Grant and I, probably two, two three days ago, we were doing an early morning meditation. We were practicing sword together. We were getting ready to you know, get the get the morning started. We were getting ready to do some work. We started with the meditation and Dr. Grant he started to talk about how, you know, it was it was very frigid. It was in the twenties. 
he was talking about how cold it was and just the whole environment of being outside and the elements. And he started to talk about, you know, warriors. This was something they had to endure. It was part of their experience. You know, they didn't put war or what needed to be done on delay based on what was going on with circumstances, the weather, that type of stuff. And in that moment, I mean, it just really hit me. It was very emotional. I'm not sure if I'm doing a good job of, you know, setting the stage for what it was like, but it was very emotional. It's, you know, gave me a sense of this is authentic masculinity. This is, you know, this is a moment when I wanted to, you know, give Dr. Grant an energetic high five. I mean, it just, it really felt like we were in that moment of, of what it means to be a man. So I, I guess more than anything, it, above and beyond characteristics, for me, it's just it's an experience. Interesting. Well, I think I think I'm probably our viewers and myself are really curious as to what does it mean to you personally. Uh, as far as me personally, uh, within mm -hmm. my personal life, or we never told you this is going to be easy. No, we're we're <laughs> curious about we're curious about what does it mean to be a man for you. Uh, for me, it's about having the courage to do the right thing. You know, it's there's a lot of opportunities to make low integrity situations. Um, there's a lot of uh, opportunities to make low integrity decisions. Uh, I have opportunities to sell patients, you know, more services than they actually need. I have opportunities to steer things in unhealthy directions, whether it be with my patients or my wife or my son and to stand up and have the courage to do what needs to be done versus what's going to line my pockets or uh, what's going to offer me a popularity contest or those types of things. I guess that's what it means for me to personally be a man. Awesome. And how do you know what to choose, Dr. Brad, in the moments of truth? That experience, it's, um, it's, it's deeper rooted than... Um, than even right or wrong. It's, I think it's one of those things, It's the deeper you go, the more inadequate language and logic is. Uh, for me, I have to tap into something that's bigger than myself, um, meditation. Um, I do specific things in the mornings to essentially put my armor on for the day. And then with that and carrying that through me, I'm able to, to make good decisions. But it's very circumstantial. You know, it's... Uh, you could kill somebody out of self-defense or you could kill somebody out of murder. In both cases, you're killing, but it's really the circumstances, it's the way that uh, you decide to navigate those circumstances that really makes the difference. Great. Awesome answer. All right, so <clears throat> you're in the health and wellness area, and um, I think men probably... I feel that that a, a tremendous amount of men, for some reason women are better at this, but I think a tremendous amount of number of men are not taking care of themselves, meaning they're not taking care of their bodies, they're not taking care of their their mind, their overall health, and without health, we really have nothing. Sure. So what's your experience uh, Dr. Brad, in terms of the people that come to you and the people that are not coming to you, what do you think is up with men that they're not paying attention? Um, man, that's, I guess that's a long answer. Um, I mean, number one, I think it's healthy to recognize that uh, typically from my experience and based on what I've read, statistics, all that kind of stuff, Women are typically the primary decision makers when it comes to healthcare decisions for themselves and for their families. Um, and so that's in terms of leadership, for whatever reason, women have really assumed that leadership. And as far as why men are not assuming that leadership, I, I'm not really sure. Um, I think it's woven into our culture. I think it ties into a lot of the things that you guys have talked about in past shows of, you know, conditioning of the media and those types of things because most men do not take uh, a serious look at their health. 
if anything, I think it's been woven into a lot of the thinking of a lot of men to think that it's it's somehow not masculine to take your, your health seriously. Uh, you're somehow a bigger man if you trash your body, you trash your mind, uh, you trash your health. And, oh, wow. And so... It's, <laughs> so so much for consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's uh, that's just that's the reality. That's the conditioning, um, and that's the I don't. Uh, that's just that's that's what's been driven into men, especially in this culture. So, so how do you think we can make a difference in that? I, I think education's key. I think these types of shows are key. Um, you know, you got to educate on every scale. One-on-one -on -one coach, one-on-one -on -one coaching, like the type of interactions that that Dr. Cruley and I get to have, as well as broad-based um, inspiration. My, you know, I do two radio shows myself, and one of my main focuses is not to steer things in any one direction, but I do want to make sure that all the cards are on the table. You know, topics like whether or not natural is better than, say, Western medicine, those types of things come up a lot. And again, it's, it's, it's very circumstantial. Um, but w people need to be aware of what their options are. I, per, per, it's been my experience, at least, that people can make good decisions if they're given all the options. But when the, uh, the deck is stacked and you have biased information, those types of things. It, it's very difficult for people to make good decisions. And I think that's a lot of what we're experiencing. And I think that's a lot of, you know, kind of go full circle. I think it's a lot of why men don't take health more seriously. Can I trailer on that, Steve? Sure. Um, I was going to just respectfully disagree with Dr. <laughs> Dr. Brad for a second. Can I? Sure, go right ahead. Take it from there. So, so what I also disagree with Dr. Dr. Brad is um, I feel that people that are not awake and not conscious, and that's 90% of our population, are going to automatically not make the right choices because who's making the decision is their egos, not their I kind of call it the new self or the higher self or whatever we want to call it. So whatever decisions they are making, those decisions are not made for the highest spent interest of the self or everyone else. So I was going to inquire into people that come see you, would you say are they mostly awake and conscious? Uh, probably not, but uh, the the right it's, the right information seems to help to waken up their consciousness. Um, it's amazing. I guess to kind of let me see how to phrase this. Something happens when people realize what all their options are in terms of healthcare options, when they start to take a global view of what their health is, and I guess that's what I mean by options. You know, in AK, that's primarily what I practice, and so we use what's called a health triangle. We look at health in three main areas. We look at it structurally, that's muscles, bones, nerves, that's where you think of things like chiropractic, massage, rehab. We look at things chemically, I do a lot of functional blood chemistries, we use nutrition to, you know, essentially fix what we find in the blood. And we look at health from a mental emotional standpoint, and that ties into higher levels of consciousness. But when people understand the broad based perspective of, of health, from a consciousness level, it, it's for some reason it seems to help them take on a, a more broad based perspective of consciousness. Um, it tends to, you know, kick that hamster on the wheel a little, a little bit and, and gets them to a place where they can, um, I mean, almost miraculously understand some of these concepts that they weren't able to. You know, I'm not saying that I'm changing their, their level of consciousness overnight or in a single interaction, but I know for me, I really try to interact in as sincere of a way as, as possible 
and that level of sincerity in combination with options uh, tends to change people pretty quickly. Um, I think Dr. Crowley's probably seen a lot of those interactions as he's seen me interact with patients. It's true. Uh, one of the things since I since I joined the clinic with Brad, uh, we met, and then for the for the viewers, um, Brad invited me to be on his staff, and. Uh, I'm very honored to be there uh, because I think his his clinic is really uh, marvelous, uh, mostly because of, of uh, not only his staff is exceptional, but it's uh, he's exceptional. And uh, one of the things he does is he helps them uh, step by step, like he, like he says, you can't just uh, if people if we could all just if Steve Toth and me and and all of us guys could just open consciousness in each other real easy, uh, everything would be fine. And we'd probably have a different president instead of, you know. But uh, <clears throat> I always got to throw that in there because I, you know, I, I feel like I neglected something. Well, we're, we, would but, have, we would have to have a magic wand and uh, I don't see either one of us having one. But what he <laughs> does do is he does work to present options and it's like a it's like sparking a neurologic system or a a uh, immune system you if it's a, if they use real good nutrition instead of just pounding stuff in like pharmacology you spark the system up in the hum in the human body so that it starts to do stuff on its own so what Brad is very, uh, he's very masterful at, at um, communication, far, far better than me. I'm sort of a blunt guy. You may have noticed that I'm a very diplomatic man. Uh, he, on the other hand... I, I haven't, I haven't noticed soul. anything. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> what he does is, uh, as, a, as a really excellent educator, he starts to uh, spark up their consciousness and they start to notice things. Why? Because they feel different. They start to mm -hmm. feel great. And then, it, and then, you know, they start to tie into that and then step by step, a co consciousness awaken. Um, I, guess, I guess in some ways you could look at my presentation of options almost as a vehicle to spark higher levels of consciousness. I mean, I don't mean that to even remotely sound egotistical or anything like that, but it's that's just the vehicle I've chosen to uh, to challenge people a little bit. And through that process, uh, it does change their thinking. It changes uh, who's driving the machine, in many cases at least. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing there between the lines is that you may be energetically influencing your patients. Would that be accurate? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I uh, we we use very. Um, so you do have a magic wand. <laughs> he, has, he has he has a few. Most of yeah. doctors do. Now, and just like you, uh, for those of you out in the audience, Steve Toth himself has quite a few magic wands, and then through those he transformed those wands into this enormous, uh, very good. Uh, network that he that he's made to help humanity. Can I can I make a point that I, before I forget what it is? Uh, Trailer always on your question about age before beauty. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my my great master. I've had a number of great masters that I've served over the years in martial craft. And my first, uh, uh, my first teacher for 16 years was Kushida, and uh, he was a great martial artist, but in many ways a real lousy teacher. And what he, what he taught us was um, never to rest, never to take care of yourself, because if you take care of yourself, uh, you're pampering your ego. And consequently, uh, eventually, because I took it to the ninth degree, literally, I broke my back in half when I was 27. I've had three knee operations, and I broke my right shoulder, all in the namesake of trying to be like him. Meanwhile, later in 20, uh, 2002, I met the great 
and and uh, uh, he died at, at the age of 88. Yagyu Nobuharu Tada Toshimichi, who was the 21st headmaster of the Yagyu Shinkageru, and I trained under him directly in Japan. He was quite different, and what he told me was that, and this is a man whose family served Tokugawa Ieyasu and the shoguns from the entire, he's the, he is the highest echelon there is. And he said to me that always take care of your health. Training is to produce, our swordsmanship is to pr produce useful and great citizens and models for society. And you must care for your own health so that you can do these things. So my point in leading from that to Steve and, and my view and all our viewers is this. For you men out there that are listening, <clears throat> You have to ask yourself this question. Who do you listen to? Whom do you take as examples for yourself? Who do you take advice from? And examine that very carefully. Uh, uh, you always want to try to, like, there's a difference between listening to some drugged out steroid boy that happens to be tough and looks like the village idiot on the weekend and taking advice from Marcus Aurelius or from uh, taking advice from uh, the I Ching or the Tao Te Ching or from, so the point being as a man in today's society Realize that the media and, and the engine is against you. That's not a theory. That's a fact. Period. So knowing that, like read the writings of Emerson. When he says, my life is for itself, not for display. I don't care what other people think. Think about, the, read these kind of things and look for living examples of dignified leadership that stands for, like Brad stands for virtue. That's why I drive. I drive, I commute from Georgia all the way to Tennessee every week to, to work for him. Normally, I wouldn't walk across a parking lot to work for somebody. I've been on my own since I was 27. But he's an exceptional man. So I, 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 I want to be part of that with him. And it's a virtue he set. Steve, uh, I don't give a damn about uh, the, the radio show. I'm here because when, I, when Steve and I first spoke, I recognized who he was. He's not just some guy trying to scam me so he can make a couple of bucks on the side from some unique martial art guy. He really, truly cares about people, society, the world, and he wanted to help me out. And, and consequently, I get a chance to try to share what I've learned over four decades. So that is my, uh, my point to that. So you as men, as far as taking care of your health and that, it's up to you. It's like our guest Martin said, that judoka, hey, especially if you're a father. It starts in the family, or you and your wife. But as the man, be the, be the center of handling, not your wife. What the, what the hell is that? You, got, you need your wife to tell you to take care of yourself? What's she going to do, give you a bath? So, Sensei, I'm experiencing you hogging the mic. Sorry. <laughs> what are, what uh, are we going to do about that? I... <laughs> I'm off my monologue tonight, and it's... Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, man. That, that was just my truth in the moment. So, oh, was good. Let, yeah, I, you know, I really get it. And I'm sure, I'm sure our viewers get it as well, that, that really <laughs> what, what we are all about is about values. And we don't take them 
lightly because you know that's how I run my universe my reality is based on my on my values and uh, it doesn't matter how chaotic the world is out there I make sense of the world through this screen that I have that is made up through my values and the only thing that gets through there is the stuff that's congruent with who I am the rest of it doesn't get through I know that rings true for you so let's talk about stress and the holidays these are some crazy <laughs> times 12 12 12 came and it went and we're still here <laughs> let's say praise yeah. <laughs> okay. So what's next? The twenty first? December twenty first? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit. What's that? Let's talk about people getting freaked out by the world ending this month. That's just the the fear based stuff. Um mm -hmm. I mean that's that's a very predictable part of of healthcare. It's a predictable part of uh, the society we're in. Um, Fear-based decisions. You know, one of the things I like to tell patients within uh, the first few moments of of meeting them, especially a new patient, is you know I don't rely on scare care. You know, this isn't about fear. It's about uh, building your trust. It's about you know, offering you love and compassion, and, and those what those are what the decisions that we make are based on. Um, so, I mean, that that's my opinion, at least. That a lot of this stuff is just the um, the same old fear, just in a, a different disguise. Yeah. Well, the 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 entire you know media and all the commercials that are on there about all the illnesses they want to talk to us about and all the pills that they have as solutions it, it's all based on fear they present it like what's what's going to happen to you if you don't go to the doctor and request the pill <laughs> <laughs> yeah and there's I mean there's balance there it's there is a place for fear but it's just uh, it's a loss of balance you know again it's I have a tendency to look at things from a healthcare standpoint. It's I like to tell people all the time, I'm not anti medicine. I'm just pro balance. You know, let's let's look at everything collectively, let's look at everything globally, um, and then put those pieces together in a balanced way. You know, as far as the fear of media, I mean my wife is a meteorologist. She was with a Fox affiliate in Greenville, South Carolina. She also worked in Louisiana. And throughout TV, you know, they had phrases like that bleeds, it leads. You know, they, they were well aware of the fact that if you scare the bejesus out of people, you're going to be able to control them. You're going to be able to steer them in the direction you want to steer them in. And yeah. that type of thought process, at least in my opinion, is, is beyond low integrity. That's, that's the furthest thing from what it means to be a man, you know, to, to go full circle with our... Our well, I, I, I'm not anti anti uh, medicine I, either or drug. However, it's 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 out of control because sure. the, no the average time the doctor spends with any patient these days is nine minutes, sure. and the only thing the doctor has time to say is "Hi, how are you? <laughs> Where does it hurt? What hurts? Oh, okay." Let me write you this prescription, and um, I'll, I'll see you. I'll, I'll see you when I see you next. Goodbye. Sure. Yeah, and that's, a, that's, that's, a lot of that's out of control. And you know what? Because today, because it happens every day a million times, it has become the norm. Sure. And yeah, we cannot stand for that anymore. It doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work, and it's about making shortcuts. You know, it's and from my experience, a lot of healthcare is about word association. You know, the medical doctor hears thyroid, so he thinks synthroid. The naturopath, the doctor of natural medicine, hears thyroid, so he thinks a iodine. The chiropractor hears thyroid, so he thinks let's adjust the neck because that's where the nerves are. Um, 
and to really dig into these things takes time. Anytime you try to do something properly, it may take a little bit of time. It's going to take a little digging, and Lord knows it's going to take a little bit of effort. And, <laughs> and yes. those are things that, that people just aren't willing to do. And, you know, it's, as we talk about health care, what it means to be a man, or, you know, we're, at least from what I'm gathering, we're coming across a lot of the same issues. You know, wanting to take shortcuts, wanting to not go the distance, um, not willing to do what needs to be done, whether it's it can be done quickly or whether it takes a little bit of time. Um, well, it's the wanting to it's the wanting to handle everything in our lives, like we handle fast food. It has <laughs> to be immediate. Yeah, I want oh, sure. blah blah blah, and how come I don't have it yet? Exactly, and I'm going for I'm a wide receiver, so toss it to me on the run. May, may <laughs> I offer May I offer one thing from the old? Please do. Uh, the ancient wisdom folks tells you this: if it anything that uh, is created quickly or superficially, like they're discussing, is all also disappears or dissolves very quickly. Anything that lasts. Uh, takes a long time to develop that is process oriented also takes a long time to dissolve or to, to, to disintegrate that is a uh, that is a truth and it's worth uh, contemplating in yeah, any area very, very good point yeah I mean that's one thing I encourage people to understand about hell is one of the things about the type of model that we use, you know, not just me, but the old staff and Grant, Dr. Grant, and it's just, it's a model that is process driven. It's about going through a real process. And to me, that's, that's one of the things I love about it, because it's very consistent with anything else that's worth having in life. You know, very similar to what he was just talking about. Uh, the, old, the, the idea of taking a pill and the quick fix, that's just, that's not consistent with anything else that's worth having in life. You know, and, and I think we would all agree having health is worth having. Uh -oh. Yes, and, and, and we keep treating the symptoms. It's like everybody becomes a firefighter and we, we create fires and more fires and more fires and we have so many fires now that the only thing we have time for is... It's fires. <laughs> it's, it's fires, yes. Oh. <laughs> The uh, and and what Stephen and Brad are discussing right now. I hope you're listening carefully, folks, because that is the whole engine. What drives that engine? Money. If they if they actually got people well with any of those things, they would lose millions and millions and millions of dollars. All you have to do is take a step back and watch it from a large perspective and you'll, you, I know you'll see it very, very easily. You know, Brad, uh, um, I don't know if you want to discuss this or if this is even appropriate. Sure. But if, if you, inve you invested for, uh, for your staff. He not only takes care of his own patients, he's also looking into his staff for their evolution. Um, I don't know, Steve, I'll leave that to you whether that's appropriate or not. Well, since you brought it up, it it must be. <laughs> I sort of did that. <laughs> if you wouldn't have brought it up, uh, it wouldn't be. <laughs> well, in fact, I, I want to say I'm, I'm uh, extremely proud of the fact that Brad actually uh, and Steve first Steve then I met Brad Brad actually invested for his on the benefit for his whole staff to uh, take on applied samurai wisdom my online coaching for the benefit of his own staff's evolution and I'm just very proud of that so um, I just wanted to bring that up because I, I am extremely proud of that fact well yeah I agree and what it also speaks to is that is that Dr. Brad is just by that action itself what it speaks to for me is that he's not part of the traditional corporate America model 
which is a hierarchical top-down model. Like he's the big cheese and everybody <laughs> underneath him are people that just work for him. I've been thinking about getting a plaque that says the big cheese and a, a big cigar would <laughs> be great. <laughs> And, and what it speaks to to me, and this is this is a big deal to me actually, because by doing that, what you what what you're saying, Dr. Brad, what you're communicating is that you are committed to the holarchy, where everybody is connected, and you're connected to all of your staff, and your staff is connected to you, and all of you are connected to your patients and to the rest of the world. And that's a big deal because that's the new model of corporate America. And more and more people are realizing that that's really the healthiest way to get the most out of everybody, including the leaders of the corporations or how businesses. Do you think, how do you think that Tokungo EAS took a, a Japan that had lived for hundreds of years in constant internal warfare, and I do mean constant internal warfare. He takes a, a uh, system and for 350 years has complete and total peace. Com and I mean complete total peace, folks. And it was because of what, what Steve just talked about where it was a he was investing in and nurturing the people all together and consequently he he developed an, an energy and an ongoing system. And that is a Brad's whole system is a small scale model of that. Um, so I just I just applaud awesome. that. Awesome. All right, let's talk about cold and flu. Dr. Brad, <laughs> I was on the, I was on my butt for three weeks, and I'm oh, sure dude. I'm not the only man that goes through this. So, uh, help us out here on the show and all the viewers, not just live, but the people are going to be listening and watching the Steve, archives. I, Steve, I got to tell you, you're great. You're the only guy in the world could go from Tokugawa EAS to the flu. And, it, and it <laughs> well, hey. We're gonna keep the show interesting. We're gonna okay. keep changing subjects. Come on! <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a criticism. It's just it's <laughs> the only guy to do that. <laughs> Bob and away. It was Bob. a perfect segment to <laughs> go into <laughs> cold and flu. <laughs> Doctor Brad, come on! Give us okay, some cold and flu. Cold and flu. Um, yeah, I mean, here's the deal. It's it's health is an inside job. It is about pulling all the pieces together that we've been talking about. Um, you know, stress is a is a big one. You know, there's there's lots of factors I think to think about with the flu season. You know, it's nutritionally a lot of the research suggests that it's actually a vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D is key with hormone regulation. It's key with the immune system. During the flu season, you're not exposed to sunlight. Uh, vitamin D actually is not a vitamin; it's a hormone, and it's it's a um, it's a product of the interaction of the sun and your skin. It's a hormone that's produced through that product or through that interaction, rather. Um, and so you have vitamin D, and again, that stimulates the immune system. Also, during this time of the year, this is when you're getting into holidays. The holidays for a lot of people are extremely stressful. Um, it could be something as simple as them not having enough money to enjoy it in the way they want to enjoy it. They can't buy themselves or their friends and family the presents they want to buy. Um, they could have just lost a, a significant loved one. They could have just gone through a divorce. Therefore, the holidays today isn't what it was you know, a year ago or five years ago, um, there's all kinds of circumstances. And when you get into stress, it's been well documented at this point, the effect of stress on the immune system, the digestive system, the cardiovascular system. Um, so you've got all these, these factors that start to come together, and this is only to mention a few. I mean, we could go on for days of uh, yeah. things that happen. Hang, hang on for a second, Dr. Brad. I just want to say this, because 
we'll lose the moment. So, so I just want to make sure everybody gets this. So, love is free. Doesn't cost anything. You can give it for free, and you can receive it for free. Start giving it, <laughs> and you will receive it. Like now. Sure. Like, sure. I love these two guys right now. They're both professionals. They're both chiropractors. They know what they're talking about. I respect them dearly, and because I know that they, in my sphere of influence, I love them. Do you feel the love? Yes, Absolutely. I do. Always have. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. I, I, I always have, Steve, since the first day I talked to you. And I don't need to think about buying you presents, and you don't need to think about buying me presents. Just the fact that you're in my life yeah. is the present. Yes, sure. That's right. Absolutely. And it's, you know, that's a great point. This, this whole idea of, you know, uh, sowing and reaping, karma, all those types of concepts, you can look at those from the, the tangible perspective or the intangible perspective. Um, but yeah, we all have something to give, regardless of circumstances. And it can be a huge source of empowerment to kind of reel things back in and realize that, you know, when all the dust settles, you can at least give love. And what's bigger than that? So, there I is think nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you can buy me a, a 500 Mercedes Benz, <laughs> and on my dead bed, it won't make a difference. Exactly. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So you mean when you're on your deathbed, you're not going to be concerned about a Mercedes Benz? No, I won't be. <laughs> but if you were there holding my hand yeah. on my way checking out of this reality, that would make a difference. Sure. You want Absolutely. to hear something, Steve? This is right, yeah. right from my heart. Today, I, I, today I had an experience I've never had in my whole life. So I, I, I come to work for Brad uh, a few weeks ago, folks, and uh, it's Christmas. So today I, I come into the office, and there's a little envelope there, and it says Grant Cruley. So I pick it up. And I, I don't know what's it, how much is in it or anything, and I thought it was my check for the working for the whole week. But it was only Thursday. I usually get, I got paid on Friday, so it was surprised me. He says, oh, no. He said, it looks at me. He says, that's your Christmas bonus. Now, I'm 56 years old. My whole life, I never, ever got a Christmas bonus. So I don't know if he's got wow. what he's got in there. I, I It could have been 50 cents. It was in a sealed envelope. But I gave him a big hug. And the best part of the whole day was the, that hug. And he hugged me back. And I was just so happy. And it was a total connection, me to him. I didn't give a damn if he gave me 10 cents. It was... It was just the fact that he gave me a Christmas bonus was such a lovely gesture. And I was so honored. And it was so special. But the thing was, it was a human relationship for me. I don't give a damn about the money. I, I never expected anything in the first place. <laughs> I just started. So um, <laughs> it, was, it was just beautiful. You know, it was a beautiful cure. Did you feel that? Sure. Absolutely. I mean, it, it was just so cool. I. I mean, nothing, you can't put a price on that. Yeah. I've never yeah. been able to give a Christmas bonus, so it was a first for me, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, the timing was just right for the both of you. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so I, I believe your business is called Ultimate Health Chiropractic, right? Yes. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what does it mean, ultimate? Uh, you know, when I was going through the whole process of choosing a name, um, it was probably similar to the process you went through of trying to, you know, choose a name for your, for, you know, what you're putting together and what you're getting ready to change to. Um, you know, you're trying to figure out something that says what you want it to say. You're trying to figure out something that uh, is who you want to be, uh, who you feel like you are. Um, and for me, you know, helping people achieve their ultimate health, that's, you know, that's our tagline. Uh, you know, I love how broad-based that something like that phrase can be. Um, 
Yeah, it's about people. You know, it's it's about self empowerment. That's a lot of what ultimate means to me. Um, mm-hmm. I love the idea of bringing a patient on, helping them through the process of self growth. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's I'm always trying to be conscious of how can I empower them, how can I transfer as much of the responsibility for their health on them. And then through this process, you know, typically they need me more in the beginning, and then we transition, they need me less and less. Um, and it's just a really healthy process. It's, it's helping them achieve their ultimate health. Because at the end of the day, it's, uh, you know, the, all the help they need is within them. I just mm-hmm. tell a few bad jokes, and I, uh, <laughs> you that's, know. That's I, what I do. That's what I do on the show, too. I exactly. do the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> just to bring the best out of you is the the reason I do it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, if you're not having fun, it's just not worth it. That's, that's the ultimate that's internet TV network. Exactly. So, so in terms of, I, I really get what you described earlier with the triangle, that really it's a, it's, it's a holistic approach that you have. And you, you, you look at the mind, body, and the spirit. And um, tell us some of the, t- tell the viewers some of the modalities, some of the tools that you have within the clinic that you use. Uh, sure. We, uh, you know, we use chiropractic adjustments. One of the things I use a lot of within that, you know, structural side of the triangle, and this ties in the neurology, but, you know, just the concept of functional neurology. It's exactly what the name implies. I want to figure out what parts of the neurology are underperforming. You know, this information as far as gathering what's going on with the neurology, what's underperforming, can be a product of the exam. It can be a product of just observation. You know, when I'm interacting with the patient, are they amped up beyond belief? Are they just jabbering all over the place? Or are they very slow to respond? You know, are they... Uh, almost unresponsive. You know, all those things can be clues as to what's going on with the neurology. Are they over the top? Or are they underperforming? Or are they right, right where they should be? And then I might use things like chiropractic adjustments. I might do things with the eyes, the neurology from the eyes. The brain is very well studied. I might use reflexes. That ties in neurology. I use the motor system. That's where muscle testing comes into play. I test, I test different muscles because I know the neurology that ties into those muscles. I use balance systems, um, all those types of things. But you know, those are some of the, the modalities, the adjustments, the reflexes, the eyes, the muscle testing. Um, from the chemical standpoint, I use what's called functional blood chemistries. What that amounts to is blood work. I use that because that's kind of like a blueprint for, a, for who a person is chemically. But within that, you know, I'm, I'm deciding what's going on, and then I'm using clinical nutrition versus medications to fix what I find. And then as far as the mental-emotional standpoints, and that kind of ties more directly into the consciousness that we're talking about here, mm-hmm. I use a technique called NET. It stands for Neural Emotional Technique. I can reboot the nervous system around emotions in the same way you would reboot a computer around a virus. I mean, that's the, that's the Cliff Notes version. Um, I might use some Qigong, those type of things. That's more direct energy work. Um, I might use EFT, emotional freedom technique. I might use some mirror work. The mirror work, I actually haven't used that in a while, but that's um, at, at a certain point in my career, that was one of the most profound things I used. And really what that is does that, is it... Is that NLP? Uh, neurolinguistic uh, program, uh-huh. is that what you're talking about? Uh, yeah. It's, it's kind of similar, but you just start to challenge patients. You start to reprogram the neurology, but it may be through questions like, who would you be without... Um, you know, who would you be if you weren't scared of your father? Or who would you be if you weren't scared of your mother? Who would you be if you weren't scared of success? Or who would you be if you had confidence? Um but just, you know, for a lot of people, their conscious state is just they know nothing different. Um, as unhealthy as it may be, it still feels like home. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's a lot of why I like to present options, is it's a very non-confrontational way to just kind of slide these things in the back door and help people to understand that 
uh, man, I've never thought of my life in this in this way. Um, and then I, you know, I try to dance with the patient. You know, it's if I need to do get you? a little bit uh, more abrasive, I'm willing to do that. But uh -huh. my my approach is generally to underreact. I feel like I can always crank up the heat if I have to. Yeah, I lived in Tennessee, so so I have a, a little access to this. So let me ask you this: if if you get somebody as a patient that's completely resigned and cynical, then what? Yeah. <laughs> 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 what tool are you reaching for? A two by four? I walk in the door with shotgun shells going across the door. <laughs> <laughs> I lay my Uzi on the table. I say there's there's one of two ways we can do this. The easy way and the hard way. <laughs> no, but uh, okay. you know, I just you have to gain that trust. Trust is a big thing for me. Um and that trust can come from talking about their health issues. That trust can be talk about uh, deer hunting. Uh, that trust can be talking about a football game last night. Um, people people just don't care what you you know. It's it's a cliche, but they don't care what you know until they know you care. I mean, it's I they have to be confident that my primary intention is to connect with them. You know, and connection obviously yeah. drives directly into conscious you know into consciousness. I. I mean that's that's what makes me feel alive. How connected um, am I with you guys right now? Am I connected with how connected I am I with the world around me? Um, you know, how direct are those lines of connection? That's that's kind of my baseline. Yeah, that's absolutely right on. Like, yeah, like without trust, there is nothing because yeah, it's all about yeah. relationships. And without that, people put up their walls, and you're not going to get anywhere. No, it's uh, I have to meet with meet people where they're at, and it's, you know, I I used to read some Ken Wilber. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with him. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's, he's I read all the books and watched all the tapes. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I did it for thirty years. <laughs> Ken Wilber for thirty years. Uh huh. See? You did Ken Wilber for 30, 30 years? No, I, I read lots of books okay. and oh, yeah. listened to lots of tapes. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, I, I was after shiny objects. <laughs> There's a lot of shiny objects out there. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that is great, TV. Yeah. Kill me, bud. One phrase in one of his books is, you know, I mean, that's, I don't agree with everything Ken Wilber had to say, but... One of the things that really rung true truth with me was this whole concept of you can only change somebody's beliefs by about five percent at any given time. And you know, the key with something like that is not to focus on whether or not it is or is not five percent, but just that whole concept of easing somebody through the process. You know, and so I am in Ten in, in Tennessee. I can't walk up to a guy that's brewing moonshine with no shirt and overalls has been eating fried chicken and, and mashed potatoes his whole life and you know and, and grits about, yeah and grits and you know start talking about high levels of consciousness it's just <laughs> <laughs> well you might be su you might be surprised yeah no just I never think, know yeah and you never know and I, and I don't mean that as a judgmental statement but just I wanted to create that picture so and just that that whole idea of it's just uh, you got to meet people where they're at you know where, wherever that common ground is <laughs> awesome. Uh, all right. So, so why don't you let our viewers know a little bit about how they can contact you, like maybe your website or any other way that you would like people to contact you? Sure. Uh, we're in we're in Middle Tennessee. I'm actually in Winchester, Tennessee. Uh, so it's about 45 minutes from Murfreesboro, about an hour from Nashville. You know that whole area. But, uh, you know, again, the name of the clinic is Ultimate Health Chiropractic. We're in Winchester, Tennessee. Phone number is area code 931-967-6308. You can look at this up on Facebook. It's just facebook.com slash ultimatechiropractic.net. That's kind of a mouthful. But, uh, or you can just look up Ultimate Health Chiropractic in Winchester on Facebook and you'll find us. But um, as far as a website, we're still working on that. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, I would encourage people to to look us up. It's you know one of the right. things I can do awesome. from it is the uh, the functional blood chemistries. You know, I've definitely read blood work from a distance, um, and that's something you know I can read your blood work, kind of give you an idea of what's going on, and then we can make arrangements for nutrition, whether it's through me or somebody else. Yeah. And I I so, want to tell so you, so folks, I have a lot of experience with that. As a doctor, I highly recommend Brad. And uh, for that, I don't care if you're in California, I don't care where you are. The, the distance in functional blood work doesn't matter. And he can truly impact your health in profound ways that way. So uh, if you are interested in that, I deeply recommend that. Yeah. And, and I want to recommend Sensei, his coaching program, it's very affordable, and I don't think you're going to find another life coach on the planet like like Sensei because, you know, I've been around for a while. Uh, I'm probably connected to at least 15,000 coaches in this country <clears throat> and wow. more worldwide, and I have never come across anybody that has spent between 30 and 40 years you know, in the Japanese, you know, arts of samurai and incorporated all of that wisdom into today modern coaching techniques. So that's my well, recommendation. I, I, I uh, whether anyone's listening or not, I, I want to thank you personally for that because I had no idea you knew so many. So I, I take that as a great compliment. And as far as, uh, I know where I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, folks. Um, let, uh, I'll, I'll ask Brad. To say I don't something. either, and that qualifies me to do this network. <laughs> Brad, <laughs> Brad is studying with me uh, under the direct permission of Yagyu Koichi Tara Toshinobu, 22nd Headmaster of the Yagyu Shinkage, who I have authority through him to share that 570-year-old craft of the Yagyu Shinkage with Brad. So just say what, what motivated you to share uh, what I have for your, for your staff? I, I just, I know when I see it. I mean, what can I say? Um, I can I definitely No, Brad, you know when you feel it. Yeah, exactly. That's and that's yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And that's um, you know, I've been known to make a lot of decisions um, in my life. That's I'm a very intuitive person. You know, I don't make decisions based on what's logical sense. I'll, you know, complement my intuition with logic. But at the end of the day, if my if it doesn't resonate with me, I'm just not going to make that type of decision. Uh, with Dr. Grant, we've been studying together in the mornings. He's somebody I've really gotten to know. I believe what he's put together. Um, I just, you know, I, I take what I do very seriously. And so what I offer my staff and, and the people that I surround myself with the best. Um, and I feel like he's offering something that's truly exceptional, something you're not going to find every day. I don't know. Um, I don't think my network's nearly as expansive as, as yours, Steve. But from my experience, it's, it's an exceptional thing. It really is. One thing's for sure, folks, if you if you want to try, give yourself three to six months, and you just see for yourself if if this uh, if what I have to offer you doesn't help you. It's got well over a th I carry well over one thousand years of lineage behind me. Shinkaragiru is only one one part of uh, what I I offer. And as a doctor, although I I talk sort of colorful. I really do have a pretty pro, a profound knowledge of metaphysics and the new sciences. And I, I, uh, I tie it all together for you, but I, I put it in what I hope is very simple English so you can apply it every day, all day, and it will make a difference. Period. Fantastic. Thank, thank you, Sensei. So, so we have run out of time, and this yeah. is just another proof, is that when we are in the present moment, connected to our energy of love and we are connected to each other, time disappears because I experienced this show to be 
like two minutes long and I feel we just got started but guess what <laughs> it's time to say good night and thank you so much Dr. Brad to be on the network I I really respect what you do and who you are of course same to you sensei but uh, we've been together here for what more than six months now yeah, but Steve, I want you to know every day with you is fresh, and I also want to acknowledge, like, as we go into Christmas, uh, I take my hat off to you because I, I think you're doing one one tremendous service for society, and uh, I, I deeply, deeply appreciate it. I hope everyone uh, listens to every show you ever make, pal. <laughs> Thank you, Sensei. Uh, I take that in, and um, everybody have a wonderful evening and the rest of the night and I'm looking forward to 1221 12. Oh yeah. <laughs> let's all have a big all you guys out there let's have a big cigar, a glass of scotch and relax. <laughs> we are going to reborn. Alright, yeah. thank you all. See you next thank week, you. same place, same time. Thank Good night. you everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Today's podcast is brought to you by ObesityHotline.com, the silent killer, providing support and encouragement in the prevention of this rising epidemic. Featuring the Body by Vi Challenge, is there a quick answer to the question? Go to www.ObesityHotline.com. You're listening to Real Coaching Radio TV, building a positive network.